possibility here uh, to be here and to enjoy uh, good mathematics and skiing yeah um, um, so I my talk will be a little bit uh, unusual I think, for this conference because I will uh, talk about geometry but this is a geometry which is very very much related uh, to integrable systems and actually all the geometry you will see in this talk is geometry of integrable systems there will be many pictures but uh, I added uh, Many formulas also, because I observed that this is a conference about formulas also. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, the topic is orthogonal ring patterns uh, and uh, how they are related to discrete surfaces and, of course, to integrable system. And it is based on uh, various joint works with uh, Tim Hoffman, essentially, he is one of the main authors here, and also with uh, Tilo Rurich, Nina Smeng, who is uh, here yeah, and doing. Uh, do recording. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> and uh, Sebastian Heller uh, and Lucien working on smooth surfaces. If you see smooth surfaces in my talk, then that's a joint work with them. Okay, so first of all, uh, uh, orthogonal circle patterns. Uh, they are defined in a very uh, obvious way. Uh, these are orthogonally intersecting circles and they build patterns. Uh, the simplest way is with the combinatorics of the square grid. You can imagine the center square grid. Every uh, square has its circumcircle. And then these circumcircles... Uh, there is nothing to show at the moment. <laughs> so, um, uh, and uh, these circles intersect orthogonally, but now you go away from this standard square grid and uh, let these, uh, all these circles to vary in such a way that uh, they still, they're still orthogonal. Here you see an example, uh, and uh, I think a rather fundamental paper uh, was written some time ago. It's uh, by Ode Schramm about circle patterns with the combinatorics of the square grid. There are many, many results there, and one of the important points is that you have a convergence to conformal maps. So, and this builds a bridge to complex analysis. Yeah? So in a way, it's a conformal theory. Uh, uh, and more generally, circle patterns, uh, not necessarily with orthogonal intersection, but more general, are treated nowadays as a version of discrete complex analysis with, uh, uh, well, one highlight, uh, this theory was the discrete Riemann mapping theorem, uh, which is uh, essentially by Thurston. And, what is very important for this conference, everything is related to integrable equations. So I will start with the first integrable equation. This is an equation, uh, integrable equation for orthogonal circle patterns. Oh, excuse now, me, so I, I'm not so used to this. So what, what is the definition? I can almost guess it from the drawing. But so here you have uh, where circles intersect, yes. you take tangent lines, and they intersect orthogonally. So these two circles touch, but this one intersects these both orthogonally at the common intersection point. Yeah? So here you have one dotted circle and four neighboring circles, such as a flower, uh, and uh, all of them orthogonally intersecting, and therefore these two are, for example, touching. Yeah? So now you take the radia of these circles, and you can observe that they satisfy this equation. R is the radius of the central circle, and R1 and so on, R4, R4 neighboring circles. So, and here you can recognize uh, the Hirota equation, in integrable e Hirota equation, and that's the starting point, yeah? So now we will uh, go further, so I hope I convinced you that this theory has to do with integrable systems. Now let's uh, do this com more complicated. Okay, my talk will be about, uh, will be on orthogonal ring patterns. Uh, they are general, uh, well, natural generalizations of uh, orthogonal circle patterns. In a way, we go uh, away from conformal limit. Yeah, so, uh, where is York? <laughs> yeah, so, and, uh, mm, so this is the outline what I'm going to uh, explain. Uh, orthogonal ring patterns uh, will be considered also not 
in, only in the plane, but also on the sphere and, and hyperbolic space. This will be very important. Uh, I will describe relation to discrete minimal and constant mean curvature surfaces. And uh, for people who are interested in integrable systems, these are integrable discretizations of two versions of the singe gordon equation. Uh, discrete uh, integrable <laughs> systems uh, are, uh, give you in a smooth limit uh, singe gordon equation with plus and minus. These are two different uh, equations. Uh, we will see how different are they. OK, now uh, let us uh, come to a definition. What is a ring? ring? Ring is a pair of concentric circles. We are in the plane. Uh, we have an inner circle and an outer circle. They have radii, small r and capital R. Uh, and now you build such pictures. You have two circles. And what does it mean that they intersect orthogonally? This means that the inner circle of one ring intersects orthogonally the outer circles of, uh, of, a, of a neighboring ring. And this is vice versa. Yeah? So we have two <coughs> angles here. Touch screen. If yeah. radii are the, are the same, then you... No, 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 no. Back to the... Radia, radia, radia will satisfy some equations. Yeah? If the rings become infinitely thin, uh, do you... I will come to this, yeah? So, uh, so at the moment, for every ring, you have capital R and uh, small r, yeah? So they are varying. For every ring, uh, has two radii. Uh, now... Uh, 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 you can observe that uh, four circles pass through a common intersection point. The same situation that we had uh, in the case of circle patterns, but now you have more circles, but for every point you have four circles meeting, uh, meeting here, two inner circles and two outer circles, yeah? So in this direction and in this direction. So that follows from the definition. Now, uh, uh, let's uh, look at the radio. Yes. Yeah. Question. <coughs> he wrote the equation, maybe not so simple as you wrote, but generally has many, many solutions. Yeah. In, in this case, is this is just one particular solution, right? No, eight solutions. He wrote the equation. So, so, those which corresponds to, to these pictures. Well, these pictures have nothing to do with Hirota. Hirota was the case of circle patterns. Yeah? Right. Now we are talking about ring patterns. Yeah? So I don't come to the equations. Hmm. We are not yet here. There. OK? So, uh, so uh, again, Hirota equation described as radii for, of an uh, orthogonal circle pattern. Yeah? And any solution of a Hirota equation gives you such, such a circle pattern. But uh, if your solution is generic, <coughs> Then these circles will be overlapping, and this is a mess. So of course, uh, we are interested in some special solutions, and we will see how does it work. So first of all, you see you have uh, two triangles where you can apply the Pythagoras law, and from here you immediately get the differences of the uh, outer circle square uh, radius squared minus the inner circle squared are the same for all rings. This means that they all have the same area. So it follows from the definition. So now we understand how these uh, radii are related. Then you can, of course, uh, uniformize, take caution cinch, just to have one radii rho, which I will call rho radii, and then every ring has such a radius rho. OK. So now you see a picture, what does it look like? And you see that uh, the rings of an orthogonal ring pattern uh, partition into two diagonal families of touching rings. Yeah? So you see blue rings, uh, blue uh, rings are touching in this direction, and red circles are touching in this direction. So that's a typical uh, uh, pattern. OK, now let us look at the equations. Uh, it's not difficult, of course, to uh, derive the equation for this radio rho. And you see that orthogonal ring patterns correspond to solutions of this equation. You go uh, around the circle and sum up all the corresponding angles. And that's the equation. So rho i and rho j are circles of two neighboring rings. And you sum over the uh, edges that are adjacent 
tour a vertex. So you have a, a ring and consider all neighboring rings and sum up all these arctangent functions and the, the angle should be 2 pi. Okay, first observation. This is the same equation which describes us circle So in this case, uh, we got nothing new. From the point of view of equations, that's the same uh, thing. Uh, in, in the case of circle uh, patterns, uh, this row is just the logarithmic radius. And the second observation is that since you, here you have the differences of rows, you can add one parameter to all uh, of them, and uh, you get a one family of orthogonal ring patterns from, from one uh, ring pattern. Uh, and since it's the same equation that describes your uh, orthogonal circle patterns, that's the same Hirota equation, so nothing interesting for uh, people who are interested in integral equations. Uh, but now let us look at this, uh, uh, I think I call this uh, delta family, where delta is this parameter of shift for, for all radii. And now uh, you see you start with a circle, you get a ring, and here you have two of them, uh, make all the family, and for deltas going to plus and minus infinities, you have two different uh, limits, both of them are circle patterns. Okay? So that's an example, though a spiral that corresponds to this simple solution of this Hirota equation, yeah? or, or, and then uh, this gives yeah, us uh, the whole family. Or maybe a more complicated thing, uh, this is a ring pattern uh, between uh, discrete holomorphic uh, uh, circle patterns that correspond to z squared and to log of z. Uh, in this case, uh, this function rho is more complicated. It's also a discrete Pendeve equation, and there are several papers on asymptotic behavior and on global behavior of this. So this case is well investigated, and now we have connected them by uh, our delta family. So can yeah? you uh, spell Schramm uh, theorem? What, what, what did Schramm says? So he has introduced uh, orthogonal circle patterns, um, uh, well, described equations. He was uh, using not this uh, for, for formalism, but the Mervis description uh, of, 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 of these uh, circle patterns. Then, uh, well, he was not very much interested in integrable systems, but uh, it was clear that the system is integrable. Uh, and uh, the important point was uh, to prove that in this way you can uh, approximate conformal mappings. So, and uh, he has derived the corresponding convergence uh, uh, claims. Okay. Uh, good. So, uh, but that's still an introductory part of my talk. Yeah. So, because uh, we are uh, 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 interested in uh, more sophisticated things. Here you see an example of an orthogonal ring pattern, and you see that this is a rather special solution. You see that we have a quadrilateral with uh, arbitrary angles, and still we can get a ring pattern which uh, goes along the boundaries. So this means that we are solving uh, this Hirota equation with some boundary conditions. And this, in this case, these are normal boundary conditions, and you can prescribe angles on the boundary. So there is a natural variation principle. You minimize some functional and get something like this. I, yeah? Uh, <coughs> what will happen? So, for given configurations, so there's kind of there's conformal symmetry behind. No? Let's say you said that there was invariance on the shift of rows, of radius. Yeah, yeah. There should be invariance on the rescaling dilatation of the rows. If I apply dilatation. Yeah, yeah, but this is probably the symmetry, yeah? So, uh, uh, Ah, no, 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 Ross, Ross, you, ca ca you cannot, yeah, so they're under Sinch and, and Kosh, yeah. But this, this is partially my question. So if I take that picture and I will just apply dilatation, ah. it will go into itself. So therefore, if I risk a radius, the picture should be the same. Yeah, of course. Th this trivial symmetry is built in and we just take one representative, yeah. No, no trivial symmetry, inversion. And the inversion circle goes into circle, and intersection going Good question. I will comment on this, yeah, just in a moment, yeah? So there is no Möbius symmetry here, yeah? Okay, um, 
And now, uh, uh, ah, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe I will answer your question now, yeah? So you see, what's the difference between circle patterns and ring patterns? Circle patterns have one additional symmetry. You can apply any Mebius transformations, uh, circles are mapped to circles, the orthogonality is preserved, yeah? So here you are dealing with concentric circles, and if you apply a Mebius transformation to a pair of concentric circles, it will not be concentric anymore. So the, this picture, this structure is not Mebius invariant, this difference, yeah? Okay, now uh, we go further. And uh, we consider orthogonal ring patterns in a sphere and hyperbolic plane. So, what for? Yeah? So, uh, it turns out that this is a good idea. <laughs> so, uh, yeah? Can I ask a question before you move into the hyperbolic plane? Because I fear that now you, it will get worse. <laughs> so, uh, if you, would this have, by any chance, have anything to do just with something like a two-dimensional pot model away from the critical temperature. So if you, if you take, if you take the two-dimensional pot model and if you look at simultaneously the lattice and, and its dual, then the place where an edge crosses a dual edge, that defines a quadrangle, mm -hmm. okay? And so on opposing sides of that quadrangle, you will have two sides from the primal lattice and two sides from the dual lattice. Looks very much like your blue, blue, red, red stuff. Moreover, uh, the, the interaction strength, you can, you can manage to write it in such a way that, uh, that you have a rhombus with some, with, with some angle that depends on that, on, on, on that uh, interaction strength. Mm -hmm. And this looks a bit like it might be massageable into something that, that you also had. One reason of, uh, for me to give a talk here is to get questions like this, yeah? So, but let us meet together after the, the talk and I will answer your question, yeah? <laughs> so, I, I really need feedback, yeah? So, how useful it is. I don't know the relation to post model in this case, yeah? So, if you explain here what's the relation, it would be great, yeah? So, but uh, uh, let me continue with uh, other things. I'll follow you into the hyperbolic. <laughs> no, uh, well, actually, essentially, it will be a sphere. It's round sphere, two-dimensional. Oh. <laughs> it's as simple as a plane. Yeah? Don't be afraid of it. And, <laughs> and on a round sphere, you know what are two concentric circles, right? Yeah? Okay, so that's what we see here. So this is an orthogonal circle pattern, uh, an orthogonal ring pattern on the sphere, defined exactly in the same way, <coughs> right? So here, you see a model, conformal model of, uh, of a hyperbolic space. Circles are circles. You can define concentric circles exactly in the same way. The picture will be like this, yeah? So um, what uh, is the difference to circle patterns? So if you consider a sphere. If you have a circle pattern on a sphere, you can project it stereographically to a plane and it will be, again, a circle pattern with the same intersection angles, yeah? So no difference. Here, if you have ring patterns, this doesn't work. Again, that's uh, very simple. And also, therefore, equations are essentially different from the Euclidean case. Yeah? So that's what we will see. Uh, again, there will be a relation to our integrable systems, and also I will see, uh, I will show you uh, what kind of structures <coughs> we can generate. So that's uh, what I'm going to uh, do now. But first of all, I'm sorry. We are here, we are on the sphere, so there are concentric circles on the sphere, and now you uh, apply Pythagorean law in spherical geometry, so which is not much more difficult. So that's, these are the radii on the sphere, these are the radii in the hyperbolic space, and that's a Pythagorean law in spherical geometry, and this is in uh, uh, hyperbolic geometry. So, same thing, essentially. Uh, you remember that from such uh, uh, simple considerations, we have derived that our rings all have the same areas yeah, in the Euclidean mm -hmm. case. Now, we also have an integral. From here, immediately, you see that the quotient of cosines of capital R and small r is also constant for the whole pattern. And here you have the same fact for cosh in the hyperbolic case. 
Now we have one invariant q, and which is less than 1. So if it's equal to 1, then they coincide, and we are in the circle uh, <coughs> atom case. So if q is smaller than 1, then I think that's uh, a notation you, you uh, usually use in, in field theory. So it's a parameter. And uh, this will be a parameter of uh, models of our elliptic function. So because you can resolve these systems in elliptic functions, and that's uh, parameterization. So we have this formula with a given q, and then you can parameterize cos, cosine r, sinh r, uh, sine r, and sine of capital R through standard Jacobi elliptic functions. That's, uh, that's a parameterization. And then you have one-to-one -one correspondence now between this pair of radii on the circle, or on the sphere, and this uh, rho, which is now uh, an argument of our elliptic function. So it's a point on an elliptic torus, yeah? Somewhere here. Okay? So that's a parameterization for the sphere. Now what you can do next, you are interested in deriving equations. <coughs> And uh, then uh, the computations are, of course, a little bit more involved. Uh, well, we introduce such a function, arctangents of uh, this elliptic function. The graph of this function looks like this. It's monotonically increasing function. And uh, their equation, you remember, we had this equation for the differences of the uh, of this radii rho in the uh, Euclidean case. Now you have differences and uh, sums. Uh, and again, uh, this sum is taken over all neighboring uh, vertices. So it's an equation of star of your graph. For every point, you look neighboring rings, and this equation should be satisfied. You see that uh, this equation actually <coughs> is variational, yeah? so you can right uh, variational principle, yeah, and that's a functional. So uh, the theorem is as follows now. Orthogonal ring patterns uh, are critical points of this functional. Uh, I think it's an interesting uh, functional. Uh, I will explain you why. Uh, the first sum is taking over all pairs of neighboring rings. So it's a sum over lattice, and now it's a sum over edges. Here, you have the sum over uh, the uh, vertices. And this is a function which, uh, which stays here. Essentially, it's an integral of the function which we had uh, before. Uh, and this is a convex function, yeah? It looks like this. That's a graph of this function. So now it's interesting to look what is this function in the circle pattern limit. Because uh, in this case, you have this limit, q goes to 1. And this function will be given in terms of uh, dilogarithms in uh, the circle pattern limit. So in this way, it's a sort of elliptic generalization of dilogarithm. Yeah? Uh, well, it depends. Uh, so yeah? so q generalization of dilogarithm, is it the same? That I don't, that I don't know. So, Probably one should simply uh, compute the power series at, at zero and compare, yeah? So, well, uh, I would be grateful if you tell me, okay, this appeared already somewhere, yeah? So in, in uh, field theory, yeah? So because it plays an important role. In, in, in Okay, now a orthogonal circle pattern limit. Q goes to zero, uh, Q, Q goes to one, that's a gener de degeneration of your elliptic curve. And uh, rho goes to log of tangent of uh, half of the radius. And then you see here that that's numerically what happens if you increase Q and in the limit Q goes to zero. Here the rings are look like this. Here they are a little bit thinner, and here they degenerate, almost degenerate to circles. Yeah? And now, again, one more theorem, what you can prove. Uh, the theory of circle patterns is simpler than the, uh, the theory of uh, uh, ring patterns. 
And this functional is not convex functional, therefore uh, it can be used for computations, it can be used probably to prove existence in some special cases, but not in general. Uh, uh, but if you are close to the circle pattern case, then you can prove the existence of the circle pattern, then we talk a little bit by changing q to 1 minus epsilon, and then by doing some asymptotic analysis, you can prove that in this case, uh, uh, well, you do have the existence by some implicit function theory. So for any rigid orthogonal uh, circle pattern, not degenerated, it means here, and small epsilon, there exists an orthogonal ring pattern with uh, Q. So you prove the existence in, in this way, doing this variation of principle. Is it related to Q4? Good question. <laughs> Wait a moment. <laughs> I have uh, also lit another literature. Uh -huh. There is a so-called so Fickett uh, theory of uh, generating conformal maps through minimization of some variation of functional. Yeah. Is there any relation? Uh, Fickett. I don't know. Uh, name. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but circle patterns uh, 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 are used for, for conform to compute conformal mapping. Yeah, yeah. and some generalizations of those. Yeah, I don't know. This, this name. Okay, now uh, just a few lines about the corresponding picture in the hyperbolic case. Again, you can resolve this condition also in elliptic functions. The formulas are slightly different, but the same uh, claim one to one correspondence between the radii and this, log uh, and this rows, uh, which are now on elliptic curve. Uh, and uh, the equation looks a little bit different. Yeah, so we had minus. Now we have plus here, but there's a big difference because of this, yeah? Because uh, the critical points of the functional, the functional has plus now here, and this means that the functional is convex. And convex functional is a great thing because then you can prove existence, you can prove uniqueness, you can compute just by minimizing this functional. You are computing critical points, but there is only one, yeah, on the bottom of this functional, yeah? So you do some gradient flow and get the result. And the function g, does it have a pole when points collide? Does it depend when rho j close to rho k? Does so it depend as, as one of In this case, it's real value function, yeah, which is a monotonic one. Yeah. So the graph of this function was like this. Yeah. But when they collide? So you're, talking about, you're asking about its uh, value at the origin, yeah, at zero, yeah, but it's just a regular point. Yeah. Okay, now the functional is convex and you can compute the Hessian and it will be given an elliptic function, so you see all the terms here are positive, yeah? Okay, which is of course uh, uh, great help. So, and this uh, allows us to prove the following theorem that for any choice of the boundary radii or angles on the boundary, directly or Neumann boundary condition, there exists a unique orthogonal hyperbolic ring pattern. So here you have global existence and uh, global uniqueness of solutions of uh, uh, boundary value problem. Okay, now the question about Q4. Yeah, there was a question about Q4. Huh? <laughs> so, uh, we switch the topic and uh, come back to our uh, integrable systems and uh, uh, I will start from the very beginning. Yeah, so, but we will, uh, uh, we will get the same equations pretty soon. So, um, in, uh, very simple concept, integrability is consistency. So what can you do if you have an equation for four fields sitting in the, at the corners of a quadrilateral, uh, then you can maybe resolve this equation and compute uh, this one through this field. And uh, you can put everything on the cube with some generic initial data and apply this uh, equation once, compute uh, the fields at these uh, white dots, and now for, the, for this one, you have three different ways uh, to compute the result, and the equation is called integrable if the results uh, are the same for any choice of this initial data. Okay, starting uh, with this definition, some time ago, we uh, uh, classified all equations of this type that have this property. And that's, uh, I will show you shortly, the classification uh, table that was uh, so-called ABS list. 
And there are four uh, equations which are called Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Yeah. So, uh, 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 all equations that satisfy this consistency principle and that are uh, affine with respect to all variables axis that are sitting at the vertices that what is prescribed, what is assumed, uh, can be classified. Yeah? And that's a complete classification. This is Q1 equation, this is Q2 equation, and this is Q3 equation. You see they're getting more and more complicated. And this is equation Q4. So you see uh, axes are the fields sitting at the vertices of our quadrilateral, and alphas and betas are parameters sitting on the edges of this quadrilateral. And they are coming into this equation to this equation in elliptic way, yeah? so through uh, corresponding elliptic functions. And like in the Pendele theory, yeah? so you have this top level equation, and you can derive all the rest by uh, doing uh, some appropriate limits. So Q4 can be treated as a master equation. It's the most general, and in principle, you can come to, to the rest equations. Uh, <coughs> with, with doing some limits. So this is our equation. Uh, and that's what I said already. Uh, it, it is parameterized in elliptic functions. And for a long time, the uh, problem was geometric interpretation. We didn't have a geometric interpretation for the Q4 equation. Now we do have. Yeah. So uh, the claim is the spherical and hyperbolic orthogonal ring pattern equations. Uh, I will explain what does it mean as a Laplace equation. Uh, they are essentially Q4 equation. And this is one way to write these equations for uh, spherical and for uh, uh, hyperbolic geometries. They are given in terms of these elliptic functions. And our parameters are these rows. Now we have row at the center uh, circle, and row R1, row 2, row 3, and row 4, uh, at four neighboring circles. And you see, it's not an equation on quadrilateral. It's an equation on the star. But all these equations, these Q equations, they have a remarkable property that uh, they have so-called three leg form. And therefore, if you consider four neighboring uh, quadrilaterals, then combining these four equations, you can get rid of all these short edges and only fields uh, on diagonals will be related. And this has to do, of course, with the Lagrangian uh, structure of, the, of this equation. So, of course, uh, if you have an equation on the star, it's Lagrangian. If you have an equation on the quadrilateral, then it's uh, an evolution equation. Okay, anyway, this is uh, this Laplace type equation, which can be derived from Q4 equation. And the claim is that our rows, which we have defined for spherical and for hyperbolic uh, ring patterns, satisfy exactly this equation. So in this sense, we are doing integral systems. What about periodicity, uh, real period? Rho is shifted by real period. What does it mean geometrically? <coughs> Well, you see, there are, uh, well, these are real, this is imaginary. So, uh. <coughs> no, if you, if you shift some row by period, nothing, nothing changes. No. But, uh, ah, you mean by, by the full period? Yes. Nothing changes. Rows are defined, the rows are, are defined on the torus. Circle won't change? Rows are defined on the torus. So the shift is the same point. Okay, now uh, uh, you see we have integrable system and we have ring patterns. And now I would like uh, to show you a couple of uh, uh, cases how it is used in, in geometry. So this is an example of an orthogonal circle pattern. You see it here. But as soon as you have an orthogonal circle pattern, you can take tangent lines to this uh, uh, intersection points and build a polyhedron. This is so-called Kerber polyhedron. And uh, they come in pairs, this and this. Yeah? So you simply take different direction uh, for, for these edges. Uh, and uh, you obtain circumscribed polyhedron with touching edges. 
So for this polyhedron, not the vertices lie on the sphere, not the faces touch the sphere, but the edges touch the sphere. So that's sort of intermediate case. So there's a big theory about this, uh, studying with Kirby, Andreas, Thurston, and after that, uh, there was a lot of research, uh, uh, great uh, theories. So uh, what you can do now, you can do the following uh, thing. You can uh, obtain minimal surfaces this way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to explain you that with this ring pattern, one can generate discrete constant curvature surfaces. But this path from ring patterns to constant curvature surfaces is a little bit more complicated than uh, the path from circle patterns to minimal surfaces. And that's what I'm going to show you, how it works in this case. And please believe me that in the constant curvature case, it's a similar but uh, more sophisticated construction. So now that's the philosophy. You take a continuous minimal surface you would like to describe. You take the image of curvature lines uh, to the sphere, and this, uh, this map is just a Gauss map on your surface. Now you take some pattern of these curvature lines, and you get a cell decomposition of the sphere. This cell decomposition uniquely determines your curvy polyhedron. That's a, a great uh, uh, result, and it is based on the variation principle. And after that, starting with curvy polyhedron, you can generate back a discrete minimal surface. In this way, you have geometry from combinatorics of curvature lines. Yeah? So we did this uh, some time ago, and now I'm going to show you how does it work. Yeah? So I think I still have 20 minutes, or even more. Yeah? So uh, and then I will use this to show you some uh, picture, how does it work? Yeah? Three minutes pause. change the combinatorics and then you modify the corresponding polyhedron. And since you have uniqueness and existence, there is only one. We have subtitles for mathematicians. circles here and they are projected stereographically to the plane and you see that also there's also circles. This is the Mobius freedom in determining the curvature polyhedron. Now we are going to a smooth limit by refining the structure. Ah, not yet, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> how, 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 how one de defines the surface, uh, the, the, how one gets the surface. This is a curvy polyhedron, this is a piece of a new surface. smooth limit. 
made this movie? Yeah. Hmm? Who made the movie? So we made this in Berlin. There are three authors. Yeah. Yeah. So this is here. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Sasha, a question about hyperbolic uh, picture appeared in the last uh, slides. So in the last slide, it was a hyperbolic funnel. So what happened when the color becomes singular and shrink to the pseudosphere, which is called pseudosphere? Yeah, yeah, the angle is also possible, yeah. Right, so, but then what happened with... Yeah. So you can prescribe boundary data in the boundary data... It's a kind of center of Poincaré disk. Especially the angles that the corners of uh, polygon. So zero angle is okay. So when color becomes shrink to zero, you don't have this picture. Right? I don't have this picture. Yeah. So there are only finite po po polygons here, and because uh, we need uh, finite po polygons. So now uh, let me explain you shortly what uh, is the corresponding uh, surface theory uh, piece of this. Yeah. So as I said, this um, uh, orthogonal ring pattern. Uh, can be used to generate constant mean curvature surfaces exactly in the same way or in a similar way as I have shown you uh, circle patterns generate discrete minimal surfaces. Yeah, and uh, now we are getting smooth and uh, the, the, that's uh, our types of surfaces we would like to construct and now we are doing smooth theory. So this is a, a singe gordon equation on, on a Riemann surface where Q is a quadratic differential, holomorphic quadratic differential. And typical surfaces you would like to construct are n noids, that's the surface which you see uh, here, with uh, some legs going to infinity, or some periodic reflection surfaces that are built from fundamental polygons by reflecting them and by gluing them together. So there is so-called DP uh, W method, Dorfmeister Petit Wu method, based on integral systems, actually, on Ivasawa loop group uh, factorization, and these surfaces were produced uh, using uh, this uh, method. So the problem is that uh, it works perfectly numerically, but uh, it's difficult to, uh, sometimes to prove uh, mathematical theorems, like this decomposition exists and is unique, and, and how to get exactly this surface. So therefore, uh, th there is, uh, uh, well, need to maybe to generate these surfaces uh, in a way that you can really prove things. So I will show you a couple of examples. These are anoids, these are minimal, uh, these are periodic surfaces, and uh, these are also two-dimensional periodic surfaces, and this is a piece of three-dimensional periodic surface. Since the surface. Yeah? And now we will try to generate the same surface uh, using our ring patterns. That's a spherical ring pattern, and this one corresponds to the surface, uh, to this surface, right? <coughs> so you see it looks smooth, and it has two faces. So it's either uh, you can show the disks that are touching disks, like in the picture for minimal surfaces we had, or uh, you also can observe that if you have, if you take four disks here, they have four touching points. If you take a sphere through these four touching points, this sphere will intersect these circles orthogonally. And this sphere gives you a metric on the surface, the size of this sphere. And this metric really essentially satisfies this Q4 equation. So that's the metric for this constant mean curvature surface. In the smooth case, this metric factor, this conformal metric uh, factor, satisfies uh, the singe gordon equation, the elliptic singe gordon equation with plus in front of singe. Uh, and here we have a discrete version of this. So in the geometric interpretation for the metric now are not these disks, not the radio of this disk, but the radio of the corresponding orthogonal spheres. Well, uh, I presented uh, here just <coughs> a few details, so because of the time reasons. Yeah? Uh, okay. So such surfaces with these disks and spheres are called uh, S isothermic, <coughs> and there was some research on that, in particular about minimal surfaces, about constant mean curvature <laughs> surfaces. But now we have a uh, uh, great tool to, to construct them, 
namely these orthogonal ring patterns on the sphere. So, um, yeah, so now <coughs> let us look how it, does it work in reality. So all three of them are discrete uh, surfaces. This is a discrete minimal surface, and these two are constant mean curvature surfaces, discrete constant mean curvature surfaces. This discrete minimal surface was constructed in the way uh, you have seen in the movie. And it is based on the circle pattern. Now you make your circles rings and, uh, well, generate these two surfaces. So this is sort of positive mean curvature, this is a negative mean curvature, but essentially it's the same surface. So minimal and CMC, circles, rings. So, uh, and now, uh, these are the corresponding circle and ring patterns that correspond to these three surfaces, to these two surfaces, because for these two, the rings are uh, actually the same. Yeah, so you see how it looks in, in reality. Uh, now, uh, about the convergence. So, uh, in uh, uh, the minimal surface case, uh, we have C infinity convergence of this circle pattern generating uh, minimal surfaces to smooth surfaces, yeah, to the surfaces you have seen in the movie. So here you see a smooth surface, constant mean curvature surface, generated by using this DPV method, using loop group factorization and some uh, all that stuff. And here you see a discrete CMC surface, which was generated by a completely different method. Uh, using these uh, ring patterns, which I have uh, presented here. You see how similar are they, yeah? So these are 3D models of the surfaces, yeah? So these are 3D models uh, of the corresponding uh, surfaces with uh, opposite mean curvature. And physically, actually, what do you do? Uh, you can fix the boundary and put the soft film here. It minimizes the area. Then it's a minimal surface. But then you put a little bit pressure inside. And there is a constant difference of pressure inside and outside. Then it's constant mean curvature. That's a physical interpretation for these salt bubbles. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, and the pressure can be a little bit larger inside or outside. And then you have these two surfaces with constant mean curvature, which we, I have shown you. Yeah? So, I mean, this one and this one. Yeah? So they are a little bit extreme, yeah? But that's uh, what is going on. Okay, now look what you can do. So you can take a smooth surface, 3D model, printed one, and the discrete one. Actually, uh, this is the same piece, yeah? So you can build this surface out of this, I mean, the smooth one. But now, when you put it on the surface, then you see they fit absolutely perfectly. This means that probably, uh, and this is a discrete one, this is a smooth one. So this means probably that there is C infinity convergence in this case as well. So that would be my conjecture, yeah? It would be, it would be difficult to prove. Uh, in the minimal surface case, uh, uh, it's, it's not so difficult, since you have the convergence to conformal maps uh, of uh, circle patterns. Uh, in the ring uh, uh, pattern case, nothing exists, yeah? So, of course, there are some methods, but uh, this is an appealing problem. Okay, now I'm close to... to the tails? You have holes, so what happens if you continue this? Continue what? Here? Yes. So it's a piece of a three, uh, three, uh, triple periodic minimal surface. You take the next box, put it here, and there will be a smooth C infinity uh, connection. Yeah? So it, it's triple periodic minimal surface in this. So, but of course you can glue Delaunay ends also and construct old examples like this, yeah? So, recently we have published a paper with more than 50 pages, uh, more than 50 pictures. With a layout of a journal, yeah? And it was a journal in mathematical physics, yeah? Okay, uh, good. So now uh, I, I would like to attract your attention to Again, to smooth uh, theory and discrete theory, which is quite uh, quite near here. Yeah. Uh, well, two sigma models. Yeah. 
So you can consider minimal surfaces in S3, and uh, that's a different class of surface. But it's, it is satisfied, uh, by, it is described by the same Singe Gordon equation as surfaces with constant mean curvature. And the surfaces are isometric. Constant mean curvature surfaces are isometric to minimal surfaces in S3. So the, uh, in geometry, it is called Lawson correspondence, this kind of isometry. It can be described on the level, not on the level of a metric, but on the level of frames, how you can generate one surface from another. The question is, uh, we are trying to solve this. What is a discrete Lawson correspondence? How to generate discrete minimal surfaces in S3 by using our uh, constant mean curvature surfaces and the discrete Lawson correspondence? Yeah, it is still a problem, right, Nina? Yeah, well, we have one, uh, you have one numerical kind of example where something closes, so uh, we're on a good way, I think. Yeah. So you see, it's it's a, it's a work in progress. So here I show you four faces of the same surface, actually. Yeah. So that's a surface which was generated by uh, this integrable uh, theory <coughs> methods based on the Vasava loop group decomposition. And the, you have a surface in S3, and you just uh, consider several uh, various stereographic projections to R3, because this is a picture in R3. And uh, various projections respect uh, various symmetries of the surface. And there is a lot of symmetries, and therefore uh, you have many faces of the same uh, surface. So our uh, goal is, next time I will show you something like this, built out of circles, yeah? like, like uh, we did uh, for, uh, uh, for CMC case. But the, but the message is spherical orthogonal ring patterns described by integrable Q4 equation uh, with a variational principle uh, probably describe this case as well. That's still a conjecture, but it's true in the smooth case, yeah? So hopefully it, it works also in the discrete case. Next slide, yeah? So what you can do, uh, this is also a work in progress, you can uh, describe uh, minimal surfaces in under the sitter space. They are isometric to constant mean curvature in this Lorentz space R21. So the difference is not that much. If you look at the equation, then there is minus here and not plus. So, um, and here you see an example of a smooth minimal trinoid in under the sitter. So this is one end, there is another end, and third end. This is sort of two strings coming together and generate the uh, third one. And that also was uh, obtained uh, recently by, by the Sivasava decomposition method. Uh, uh, it's not so difficult, uh, I think, to uh, generate CMC in R21, and that's what we can uh, soon uh, do in, uh, in uh, using our hyperbolic ring patterns. You, you remember I was always using these spherical ring patterns, but not hyperbolic. Hyperbolic will give us CMC in R21, and if we will find the Lawson correspondence, the discrete one, then we will be able to generate a minimal in anti-decitor. So that's, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's a possible, there's a possibilities, uh, what to do next. And the message is that hyperbolic orthogonal ring patterns described by integral Q4, in this case, the equation uh, with convex variational principle, which should be a really very helpful thing to prove the existence of uh, such surfaces, uh, are responsible for, for, for this kind of uh, discretization in geometry. So these are uh, some papers. Some of them are still in progress, yeah, so maybe that that's the most relevant paper for what I was uh, talking about. Uh, and uh, that's the strictly periodic surface you were asking for. So you see, I prepared the slide for you. <laughs> yeah, and that's uh, an example of an integrable discretization smooth surface made of porcelain, and that's uh, the, the corresponding uh, uh, discretization. Okay, thank you for your attention.